Good evening, good afternoon, and good morning whenever you are listening to this. Welcome to Curtain Call. So Curtain Call is an opportunity for our guests to showcase their new talent, new achievement, and to talk about whatever projects they're involved in now. So we ha are very, very honored on the very last show of Curtain Call, although we may add a few more at the end, we're not sure. The very first, uh, very last um, show of Curtain Call, we are so honored to have Sarah Edwards, who is an online tutor, probation officer, and newly published author of her book, Success on Probation, a step-to-step -step guide to reform your life and release yourself from your mental jail. So please welcome everyone, Sarah Edwards. Hi. Hello. Hey, Sarah, Thanks. welcome to Curtain Call. Hi, Paula. Thank you very much for having me on your last show. It's really such a pleasure. Thank you. And an honour for you to have us for you to have us on your show. On our show. See, I'm getting really confused. It's the last show. I'm like all oh, built up. It's, <laughs> it's been wonderful actually. We've had some really amazing people. So if any of um, our past guests are listening, thank you so much for being on here. It's been a real pleasure hearing your stories. And now, Sarah, it's your turn. We're gonna hear your story. So how does it feel? being a newly published author because I think it's only been two weeks ago that you had your book published yeah Is that right? yeah 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 it was yeah um it just feels amazing you know the fact that I can say I'm a published author that my book is out there you know you spend so long writing on it and working on it so it's yeah just been amazing and I just want to show it Yay, to everyone there it is. I'm so proud of my book the fact that you know I'm a published author here's my book um, so, so yeah, just an, an amazing feeling, just such a massive achievement for me. And then the, there you are on the back. So that um, that front picture is amazing. It's um, it's a head of butterflies, right? So why the but? I mean, I have butterflies on my covers of my two books. Why butterflies? Yeah. So it kind of symbolizes just setting yourself free and that element of freedom as well. Um, so I always um, loved Alicia Keys and she uses a lot yeah. of butterflies, um, particularly in her album, The Element of Freedom. So it kind of symbolises just being free and particularly with releasing yourself from your mental jail, it's kind of just releasing everything from your mind, making yourself feel lighter. And butterflies are so such light creatures. They've just got the freedom yeah. to just fly through the air whenever they want, wherever they want. They're so bright and colourful. Um, so graceful as well so it, it just symbolizes everything and with the hair obviously I wanted um, someone that represented me um, I know that in the media there's there's not always representations of black mm. women race women around but I really wanted that coming through in my image so the afro hair is obviously normally my hair is big and afro so it just really represents me so I love that do you know the Afro-American, um, she's an inspirational speaker and author called Lisa Nichols. Are you aware of her? I'm not aware of her, no. Look her up. She's amazing. She's one of my inspirations. But she says that when she was growing up, there weren't any role models for her. You know, this black Afro-American. She said all the superheroes were white and they didn't look like her. And she, she wanted to change that. She wanted to um, provide a superhero inspirational role model for other women like her and other children you know young girls and, and young men and women like her and so that that just reminded me of that look her up she is absolutely amazing she's like well, thank you for the recommendation so yeah to, to kind of end similar thing to me you know growing up there's not always people that look like you on the front of yeah. magazines or books so I just wanted to really kind of bring that through Excellent. Well, well done. And so how long was the book process for you? How long did it take to write and where did the inspiration come from? Um, so if I'm honest, um, it's quite a quick process for me. Um, so it started when I had a session with a mentor and we were talking about my business and kind of my goals, my ambitions, my passions. And from there, kind of it stemmed to say, you know what, well, I'm going to write a book. Um, so it probably from March, not March, from May till the end. So probably about a month, maybe Excellent. four or five weeks, which a lot of people are shocked at. How did you manage to write a book so quick? I'm shocked myself <laughs> <laughs> how I managed to write it so quick. But I feel like the idea was there. The idea was probably bubbling for years and years. And it was just kind of getting that out and onto paper. 
Um, so the inspiration was, you know, success on probation. I'm a probation officer. That's been my job for many years. I've had so many years where I'm working with offenders to help rehabilitate their life and focusing on helping them reach their goals, help them live a life away from crime, help them live a better life. And I thought, you know, hold on a minute. You're so busy working on improving everyone else's life. Your life kind of gets put to the wayside. And I thought, especially as a mum, Mm. your life you know your children come first you hear a lot of the time you know your identity will change as a mom and I thought no that's never going to happen to me and <laughs> lo and behold my identity was slowly slipping away you know the things that I loved were put to second place the time that I spent on me was put to second place and you find yourself just on that rat race of work home life children yeah. life and you need to just put a pause on that, just like with offenders, where they're getting caught up in crime, in the wrong crowds, doing the wrong thing. And for them going on probation is kind of putting a pause on that and saying, you know what, your life needs to change. So this is that all mums out there, and it's not just for mums, even though it's aimed at mums, it's to say, hang on a minute, put the brakes on and just reflect on your life. And is that the pathway you want to be in? Or can you do something to make that change? So that's, and it kind of just, that's why I wrote it so quickly, I think, because I was living that, you know, I made a personal change in my life. I put a, a pause on my life and thought, hang on a minute, I need to change. So I think when you're writing about something you're passionate about, it, it just comes from a place of knowing. So that's how it's, it just kind of flows out of you. Did you find that being in lockdown, because um, you said you're a mum, how old are your children? They're two and four. So they're very young, so you were full on with them. Yeah. There's no school, yeah. no nursery. So did you find that the time with them, um, how did you squeeze in the time to write the book? And and did it also take you away from your work having with lockdown? Did, were you furloughed? Were you able to commit your time to writing because you yeah. didn't have that um, commitment to work? Is that what happened? Yeah. So I took some time off work and during that time I was able to really focus on working. So my children were with me, but because I had a passion for, I was, you know, dedicated to doing this. I was like, I want to do this. I'm going to focus on it. So all my efforts I put into that. So in the evenings or when my partner could have them. So on Saturdays when he wasn't working, I would say, you know, take take the kids. Have them. The have <laughs> them so I can get some solid focus time yeah. in. Like, I feel like I work better in like big chunks of I'll just focus on it and then I've got something done. And I think that's the difference. When you're really motivated and see a goal in mind, so the goal in mind was I'm going to be a published author, I'm going to have a book. So I, I wanted to get it done. It wasn't a chore for me. And I think that's the difference. When something's not a chore, you just, that's all you can think about. It's like, yeah, I really want to do it. Yeah, it's yeah. To get this done. So you, you find the time for it. Do you think that um, lockdown has made a lot of people reevaluate what's important to them, maybe look back at their talents and their passions, maybe, um, I don't know, like, you know, you know, um, you see children going back and playing with their toys that they loved. I've seen it with my son. He's gone back and he started playing with his Lego and I see him go around and go, and he's yeah. nine, right? And um, it's allowing us to go back and almost be a little bit more free. Philip Chan says, well done, Sarah Edwards, to get it done. Well done. Well done. <laughs> Do you think that lockdown has made a lot of people think, okay, well, what else have I got in the bag, in my tool bag? What else can I do? It Does my job define me? You know, is there something else that I can, I can utilize this time for? Because no, none of us really know if another lockdown's coming or if how long some of us don't, can't go back, you know, amazing makeup artists aren't going to be going back to regular work. Did you have that feeling when you entered lockdown? Like, okay, well, this is my time now. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to just do this. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, for, for me personally, I felt like lockdown was very similar to being on maternity leave. So yeah. as a mum, the transition wasn't that, that big. And I've always said to my partner, you know, if this had happened before I had kids, I would have had a meltdown. I wouldn't have coped. I would have, you know, missed all those things about going out. But I think being a mum to young children, your time is limited. You're, you know, you can't necessarily just go out when you want or go where you want. No. Money is limited. So you've already got that external pressure to kind of 
reduce your life down. So the jump was not that hard. It was the hard bit was obviously being engrossed in that life with the children all the time, constantly without yeah. having a childcare. So it made me think actually we're really lucky to be able to have childcare. Um, but I think gen generally for a lot of people, it has given them that pause on their lives that maybe they wouldn't have ever put on. Sometimes you need that external um, that external pressure put on you to say, actually, you need to stop because you're not, you know, when you're running through life, it's very rare to stop, even if you take a bit of annual yes. leave, it's holiday from work, you know you're coming back to something. So I think, you know, from from the friends that I've spoken to, they've, you know, it has been hard, but actually it's made them think, well, you know what? It's nice to spend time with family. It's nice to go for walks. Like my kids, we always go for walks anyway. It's something free to do. They get fresh air. Um, so for us, it was really nice to just have the kids enjoying going for walks every day. And now they always want yeah. to have a walk. Yeah. <laughs> Even when I drop them at um, the childminder, they want to walk there. They want to have a walk after. They want to go to the park. So it's really just appreciating actually the simple things. Um, yeah. Particularly with mums, they haven't had that running around to and fro in birthday parties every weekend things to go to so it's I think for parents well the ones I know anyway it's been quite nice to have that retreat there you are but that's Philip them... <laughs> <laughs> yeah Philip says your new book is your new baby <laughs> yes, <it> is, yeah <laughs> you have three babies now so yeah. um you're a you're an online tutor of psychology and criminology and yeah. who are your students where and you know where where's your reach with stu with tutoring uh, yeah. are they are they students out of college are they you know grown-ups you know who are yeah. your students so I have quite a, a mix of students so I have some A-level students so they're doing A-level psychology and before lockdown they were preparing for their exams so they you know they really want to get their exams so they can go to uni and A-levels there's so much pressure put on at A-levels so yes. I started off with A-level psychology tutors and then I was getting some more university graduates. So there would be mainly second year or third year focusing on their dissertations and they would just need that last minute boost of help to get them through to kind of boost their grades. And more recently, I've had a lot of mum students, which I've, I've loved doing. So they've gone back into education They've maybe had, you know, 10, 15, 20 year break and they've said, you know what, I want to change my career. So quite, um, quite a few of them have, the reason they're changing their career is to do something more. All right. That's okay. It's nice. That's what happened. <laughs> we'll let you adjust yourself a little bit. I'll just take my dial away of my heating because it's live. So, Sarah, are you still there? I'm still there adjusting my that's fine it's live so um have you found I'll, I'll pose this question you can think about while you readjust yourself have you found that um the psychology side has really come in handy with people really questioning and evaluating themselves during this time I mean you know it's like four and a half months for most people now um yeah. do you find with your psychology experience um and your students even now they come to you and saying how do I deal with this you know how to get my head around everything that's going on yeah definitely that was that was one of the first questions is you know how do I deal with it a lot of the um so with the 18 year olds for example the ones that were at um, doing the A-levels, they'd gone from having a regular structure and a routine to get up, go to school, to having nothing. Yeah. Um, without any warning, they had dealt with so much pressure being through their GCSEs, their A-levels, it That's all right. kind of grew up to this stage. And then it was like nothing. And they were questioning, you know, what's my purpose? Mm. What, like, why, why was I studying for all this time? Now what? They didn't have the future planned out for them because who knows how long we're going to be in lockdown? Who knows how long coronavirus is going to be around? So they had a lot of questions for me and just the uncertainty. You know, their routine was completely thrown off. They were waking up at 2 o'clock in the afternoon and yeah. um, not being able to go to bed at night. So it, I think personally, having my own experience of psychology, 
working in that kind of area, I was able to help them in a more meaningful way and actually guide them through. So I kind of felt, even though the students carried on, yes. I think the reason they carried on is for that kind of mentoring and that kind of have someone there to support them through because everything was just completely changed in their life. But we all need that, right? So, you know, I've got a 15 and a half year old who's got her um, GCSEs next year. And she, she says loads of her friends aren't doing the work, the school work. And she's mm-hmm. doing, they're doing the bare minimum because there's this feeling of, well, what's the point? We don't know what's going to mm-hmm. happen around the corner. And they're mm-hmm. actually finding, in a good way, in a bad way, they're actually finding that living life is, and being happy is far more important than planning for the future. And yeah. this, the it's it's a scary thing but they they can't see the future and also you know in you know in the thinking of Eckhart Tolle it's the power of now they're living in the moment more so in a way it's good because they're enjoying their moments more but they're not actually focusing very much on the future which is what we plan to that's what education is about right it's leading to a future yeah, so, yeah. going back to your book then so you work obviously with offenders and you work as a mm-hmm. probation officer how um how has your work influenced what you've written on your in your book because obviously it's called success um on probation uh so in which ways do you think has it had a direct correlation with what you've written yeah um i think it's had a massive impact um because you know like you were talking just then about um having a purpose um i feel like for from my kind of adult career years my purpose has been helping other people and supporting other people mm. particularly offenders and i specifically chose to go into that area of work because i feel like you know there's some people in life that just they just don't get a, ch- a break you know they just don't get a chance in life you're you're not born criminal or you know i i personally believe that it's your external circumstances you know the way that you yeah. can brought up um the kind of upbringing that you've had, the opportunities that you've had, and that all kind of results in you as a person when you're committing a crime. So my purpose is to help and support people. And I've been doing that every day. You know, every day in my job, I've been helping people reach their goals, helping people see that actually you are you are worth something. You know, there's a lot of um, kind of shame and low confidence. And I was listening to your... Um, watching your video with Des O'Connor and he was talking yeah. about um, men, you know, not being able to cry and internalising that. So, you know, I'm dealing with, which is majority men, I'm dealing with the majority of these men that had perhaps for years and years had to hold everything in and it does externalise itself with violence and crime. Absolutely. So I'm going to bring that to women like me, you know, to mums to say, actually, you are worth looking at and putting a pause on your life and you are worth setting goals for yourself rather than floating through life you know you you may think I've got my career now I've got my marriage got my kids I'm all sorted but then you might feel something something's still missing so all the concepts that I used so as a probation officer we don't just go in and have an airy fairy conversation with them every week there's actual structure to it and there's a purpose to it so the purpose is to eventually help them rehabilitate so we go through different goals so we have sentence plans we set them up plans that they can follow we're constantly reassessing them we're constantly reviewing them and it's that consistency so like with anything that you're trying to build whether you're building a business or working towards your exams whether you're rehabilitating yourself it's that consistency having someone be accountable to every week yes focusing on certain aspects of your life so we don't just sit there and talk about their crime you know we look at them as a whole person and that's what I'm relating to in the book is that you know you're a whole person and I specifically relate to like chapter one is arrest so it's about when we place ourselves in that arrest stage you know you might feel you're stressed or you might have the physical symptoms so you might be having a physical illness which really is a manifestation of stress that's right enjoy all the time so it's you know you're you've been arrested so when the offender gets arrested you know they get the police they go through the whole court process and the judgment process so that relates to chapter two where you're you judge yourself everyone judges themselves you judge others so it's about 
when you want to make a change, like with anything, you say, actually, I'm making a change, and you say it out loud, and you're more likely to follow through with that change. Anyone who's gone on a diet or an exercise plan, you say, look, I'm going on a diet, everyone, or I'm quitting smoking, everyone. So that's everyone it. knows your plan. So that's that's kind of similar to court. You're kind of saying to yourself, look, I've done something wrong. I'm acknowledging it. So, again, your video with Ben Pickering, where he um, yeah. to prison, you know, you, you've, you've made your mistake. Let's not dwell on the mistake and dwell on how to move forward. He um, was particularly brilliant, wasn't he? He made some amazing points about how he he really learned so much invaluable um, lessons mm -hmm. during that time. And mm -hmm. he watched people. And I know that he's involved in a charity that he didn't talk about, um, helping mm -hmm. men to help themselves. And he, we didn't have time to talk about that. But um, yeah, so he's then paid it forward. And that's yeah. really important, which is what you're doing in many ways. Because I know in yeah. your bio, you talk about bringing out, wanting to bring out the best in people. Mm. Now, you see the worst in people and the results of the worst in people mm. that you know may have been caused because of the worst in maybe their parents or their peer pressure. Yeah. Yeah, and how yeah. it has a, you know, a direct impact on them and the choices that they make, people make. How do you then gear, how do you, how do you sit with someone as a probation officer? Um, bearing in mind that you wrote the book about this as well and give them tools and t tips and techniques to then maybe think differently to take their life in a different direction mm. so yeah good question because yeah when you when you sit with someone you're often sitting with them and their past so they may come yeah. to you not ready to change they may come to you refusing to change because they've had a bad experience with authority so a lot of people come to you and they've been treated really badly by the prison the prison system the prison officers before that they've been treated really badly by the police before yeah. that it might be social services their school teacher and it really goes back so you're dealing with some with all of that that you have to break down so as a probation officer you have to be just really understanding of them as a person and as a human being to say actually you're here because of circumstances and your choices, but they're not necessarily who you are as a person and you can actually change. And when you're ready, so we help them kind of move so they can get ready. And as a probation officer, again, you have to make sure that your expectations are not so high. So if you've got someone sitting yes. there in front of you that's, um, I don't know, an alcoholic, it's too far of an expectation to say, right, tomorrow, now you're on probation, you're going to give up drinking and yeah. we're going to send you back to prison if you don't. That's not realistic. Anyone knows when you change your behaviour, you go backwards and forwards. So you might change a little bit. Maybe tomorrow you'll be able to replace one beer with a Coke. Maybe it gets to the weekend and you're with certain friends and you've been taken down that path of where you're drinking again and it's not about shaming people or punishing people it's about saying okay so from the tools that we've got how can you manage that situation next time because it will come up again next time you can't yeah. just walk around with your eyes closed avoiding pubs avoiding friends avoiding everyone it will happen so that's where we come in with really helping them with tools and that's in the book as well where you know if you do if you do make a mistake, it's not about judging yourself. Oh, I'm a bad person now. I've made that mistake or didn't. That's right. That. It's about learning from that experience to make you a better person. So when that does happen, whether it's five years down the line or two weeks down the line, you know, OK, that happened. I'm going to try and manage that differently. So um, that's brilliant. Really good answer. So, you know, because you've you've seen so many people in the you've listened to so many stories and you've seen so many people walk on on possibly the same path, maybe take different steps on that same path. But, you know, you've seen the patterns just like I did. The reasons why I wrote, wrote the seven um, the seven steps of I'm sorry, I'm thrown there. The, the seven traits of a highly successful single parent is because I was broken at one stage and mm -hmm. the tools and tricks and techniques that I've heard I've put in the book to help other people who felt that brokenness and um, were in what I call Stuckville so mm -hmm. it's there to help people to kind of get to the place where I've got to but it takes a while and it takes processes mm -hmm. and you know like like you said about the alcoholics you know it helps if you've got a mentor or a sponsor 
Because there are times when the reasons why you chose to drink in the first place or you did drugs or you over ate or whatever your thing is that you go to is because of a feeling and emotion and something triggers that feeling or emotion. And that's when you really need a mentor or a sponsor or some help. So I yeah. guess that's what in a way what probation what you as a probation officer does and then mm -hmm. obviously you've taken what you've learned and put it into the book and i know steve beer said where do i get the book and steve if you hold on and keep listening sarah's going to tell you exactly where to get the book at the end but i will mention it's on amazon it's on amazon <laughs> but she will mention at the end where you can get hold of her or <laughs> everything you need to know about sarah she's going to tell you at the end and where you can get a book because i think it'll be an amazing book well, I know it's going to be an amazing book. Mm -hmm. So what, um, what are the kind of patterns that you have seen in people's lives that you've been able to address within the book and that you, you feel a real, those hand-holding techniques that I mentioned? Mm -hmm. They're like, okay, try this. This is, this is what may help you get through the pro this you know, difficult transition um, going back to the butterfly, the transformation from the, the, cat, the sludgy crawling caterpillar to the, the free butterfly. So do you have tips and tools and, and techniques in there that helps them transform? Yeah, so a lot of the time, you know, it's, it's like you said, it's all down to kind of feelings and thoughts. So the thoughts that we tell ourselves, the thoughts that we feed ourselves every day, you know, if you're you're not feeling worthy of yourself, you have no self-belief, You've all, we've all got them inner thoughts inside of our heads. And um, one big thing we use is re reframing those thoughts. So say you wake up in the morning and you're like, okay, um, I didn't exercise today, I feel rubbish. You can wake up and say, I'm going to do five minutes of exercise. And yeah. setting, your, setting your sights small, just gets you in that motivation stage. So rather than kind of giving up at the first hurdle and giving into your negative thoughts, just change that around slightly. So um, with a lot of offenders, it might be, um, oh, I'm not gonna, I'm not gonna go into town again because the police are just gonna stop and search me. So you you might be able to change it and say, you know what, I'm gonna reframe that and say. You know, I will I will live my life or I will go into town and if the police stop me, I've got a genuine reason that I'm just going about living my life. So it's it's really just small tools that make a big difference. And if you keep practicing them again and again, then you get used to that way of thinking. So it's it's yeah. kind of training your mind to think in a more positive way. Um, and to take, you know, to take practical steps. So, like, there's there's steps to say, you know, especially with mums, we take on so much on our plate and think yes. that we need to do it all. But actually, you can stop and ask for help. You know, um, I've got a bit here about um, when you're kind of in in that mode where you have to really strip back everything. Um, so it's like survival mode. Yes. So we all go through survival mode. I'm at the moment in survival mode. So my um, me my too. Partner had a, yeah, <laughs> my partner had a motorbike accident. Um, oh no! Two weeks ago, and we're in survival mode. You know, we're one one parent down. So you have to readjust your expectations. You know, yeah. not all the housework's going to get done now. You need to step up and ask for help. So you need to ask for that extra help. Um, so I think it's just giving people the acknowledgement to say, you know what, you can ask for help and you're not going to be looked down upon. It doesn't mean that you're weak. And it kind of no. brings it back to that, you know, that those feelings. You're not inferior if you get help. And same as a probation officer, we're there to help the offender. But we can also say, you know what, we're going to get you help from the specialist education team to help you with that. Or we're going to get you help from um, a mentor who may be able to help you in a more specific way. Or, you know, why don't you ask the GP for help? So it's about knowing that no one can go through life completely alone. And it brings it back to having a mentor as well and a tutor. Yes. So, you know, if you're struggling with exams, you know, you, it's okay to say, actually, I need help with this from someone who knows how to go through those steps. And have a life coach as well. Do you agree? I mean, I've got so many, um, you know, yeah. Facebook friends who are life coaches, 
you know, and for men, I can I can recommend a few. If anyone wants to know about male life coaches specifically, then you know I've got quite a few um, contacts. I can put them in touch with um, male life coaches within my Facebook um, network. Yeah, yeah. But what advice would you give to someone who's looking for a second chance in life? Um, take it. You know, just surround yourself with. Um, people that are going to lift you up. So a lot of the time um, in probation, we look at their, you know, their red flags. So we, we draw a circle and say, right, you're in the middle and who, who surrounds you, who's closest to you, who's providing you with support, who's going to encourage you to commit crime and who's going to say to you, you know what, there's an alternative life. So just stop and think, you know, who have I got around you and feed yourself with like positive information there's so much information there on youtube with like coaches and people that have written books that can really encourage you to move forward in that direction because sometimes it's hard if all you know and all the people around yeah. you are thinking in a certain way of course it's it's inevitable that you're going to think in that same way so once you've kind of built yourself up with listening to other stories of people who have made it who are successful because um, a lot of the time people come out on probation, they've been in prison, hearing stories of, oh, your probation officer do nothing for you. When you come out, you just come back into jail. Of course, if you keep listening to those stories, that probably will be your future. But if you stop and think, you know what, I'm going to start listening to some positive stories. I'm yes. going to start feeding my mind with good stuff and then it, that opens up the doors to motivation and you want to find out more you want to learn more and then you need to start thinking okay once you've kind of built up that self-confidence it's knowing that anything you start any journey you start is not going to be perfect so when someone comes out of prison they're not going to all of a sudden have the house sorted have the job that they want sorted have the relationships they want so it's about being true to yourself and saying you know what, I can start something, it doesn't have to be perfect, I can just take that one little step and then see what happens next. So it's, that's specifically why I've done like a step-by-step -step system because everything yeah. is about taking small steps. Who knows where your goal is going to be in the future? Your long-term goal might change, but at least you've started making progress towards that goal. Yeah, I absolutely believe in baby steps. I talk about baby steps mm -hmm. all the time. You know, mm -hmm. just take that first step because you're not going backwards. And yeah. even if you're if you were down on your, on the floor, as long as you get up and you stand up and you're looking in the right direction, it's still a step forward. So we're coming to the end of the interview. Thank you so much for that invaluable advice. So if anyone wanted to buy your book, I have mentioned on there it's at Amazon.co.uk or in the US, um, Amazon.com. Uh, it's called Success on Probation by Sarah Edwards. Da da da. Here it is again. And, uh, yeah, and it's available on Kindle as well. That's right. Yeah, it's available on Kindle. And um, you can also, if you, you so you can go on Amazon, but you can also go to my website, which is edwardstutoring.co.uk, and I've got a yeah. link there straight away where you can. It will just take you straight to Amazon. Um, I'm also offering free consultation, so. If, you know anyone that would like some online tutoring. So it doesn't matter your age, whether you're GCSE level, A level, if you're thinking about study or you are in study, then um, again, go onto my website, edwardstutoring.co.uk and you can book a free consultation. Because it's all online as well, it doesn't matter where you are. Um, and what about, um, so obviously, where is this going to take you next? So you've written the book, you've got your job. You've got your um, your business, your online tutoring. You've got your. Are you still in probation? You still doing the? Um, yeah, I'm, I'm still in probation. Um, but my ultimate goal is to do the online tutoring full time. I would love to write another book. So obviously, have have the um, time to be able to write the next book and just expand the business. So take on more coaching clients as well. So it's yeah, I'm. My kind of motto for this year is just think big, you know. Think yeah, big. Anything, anything, can, anything can happen. Um, and we've all seen with coronavirus, I know you were saying about your kids not feeling like they've got a purpose. Sometimes just talking to someone, talking it through, really helps you identify actually there is a purpose. School is not the end. So studying, we're always learning. Like life learning doesn't have any limit you can always learn whatever age you are and it will have a use for you in your yeah. future so oh my kids yeah. 
my kids, since they've been on lockdown, I'm telling you, so one wants to be a rocket scientist or an architect or a, my son ha keeps coming up with all these amazing things and my 15 year old knows what she wants to do. She didn't know before she went in, she found herself during lockdown, which is amazing. My older daughter wants to be a singer songwriter, work in music production. My kids know what they right. want to do because their mum is always reaching for this. I, I've got this Les Brown thing, reach for the moon and if, if you hit the stars along the way, that's, I think it's that's fine or something. But, you know, mm. I'm always aiming for the moon, always aiming for the moon. So my kids are like, I'm, I'm like you, Sarah, you know? Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> I like want that for my kids, you know, as they get older, I want them to think, you know, I can do, I can do anything, I can. Well, you're their role models, they're, they're watching you. Well, we've yeah. come to the end. Thank you so much, Sarah. You're our, our oh, last no. guest on Curtain Call. What an amazing guest you are. And you've kind of brought in some of our old guests as well, Ben and, you know, Ben Pickering and Desert Corner you've spoken about. Thank you also to um, Winston George Ellis and Rosita Royce. And it's just been amazing these last six, you know, six sessions. And you've been amazing. And I wish you all the best with your uh, tutoring and with your book. And I know that you've inspired lots of people tonight, which is amazing. Oh, thank you, Paula. It's, yeah, like I said at the beginning, it's been just amazing to kind of be on your show and speak to all your um, community. So thanks, everyone. Yeah, you've been fantastic. Thank you so much. And um, thank you so much. And good luck with everything. Go buy yeah. a book, everyone. Success and probation. <laughs> Sarah Edwards. Buy it. along the way. And... Um, to all of our uh, viewers, thank you so much for joining us over the last few weeks. Um, it's been amazing. It's been really humbling. And to hear all the stories of our guests, it's been an absolute pleasure. And I, I for one, have absolutely enjoyed it. I know Moinel has. And please stay in touch with us. And if you know anyone who would really like their story to be heard, please give us, um, just drop us a message. You can get me Paula Love Clark or Paula Clark, and we'll get in touch with you. But it's been amazing. Thank you so much for joining us. Goodbye from me, Paula Love Clark and Moino. <laughs>